So here we go. In the top left, we have Light, who is on a seven-game winning streak uh, already in the King of the Hill. And then in the top right, we have Action, who is on a uh, three-game winning streak already in the King of the Hill. Uh, how did that happen? Well, Light uh, was winning last week and then uh, agreed to this time, but something came up and he, he couldn't come until just now. So we threw uh, Action against Shuttle and Action yeah. won against Shuttle. Then he won against Scan. Then he won against Mighty. So... Uh, he is, he's making himself some dough, but now he has to get through the big boss of light. Yes. Um, yeah, the show must go on. So we had action here. Action has actually put up quite a performance, by the way. Really looking. Um, I mean, honestly, just untouchable in all of his games. I think that you might be right, though, Artosis. I feel like light should be the favorite here. Light, real, especially in this matchup. He's got a very solid way to approach the game overall. There aren't really any holes in his play. There's not any kind of characteristics when you watch him in a TV series where you go, ah, oh, well, you better watch out for this. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he he oftentimes isn't ready for a Zergling rush or he's weak against, you yeah. know, Muta Harass or he's, you know, I, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's mm -hmm. just, he seems to be pretty much perfect TVZ. But action, I say that he has an even wider range of play than Light does. He yeah. really can do anything yeah. in this matchup. Yeah, I would definitely definitely agree with that. Like, Light, uh, while he can do everything, like, odds are definitely in favor of Light going for just an SK Terran play here and just doing, like, Marine Medic Science Vessel. You know, we might see BCs, we might see dropships, stuff like that, but he plays a pretty darn standard TVZ. And the reason behind that is, well, it's first off, it's, like, kind of the, the best thing right now, and it's super flexible. He is god mode at it. Like, honestly, he his Terran vs. Zerg, he was thought of as a Terran vs. Zerg sniper for a very long time. And it's more recently in the last couple of years that he kind of filled in his other matchups enough that he's become championship quality. But his TVZ has always been that. It's always been one of the top two or three uh, SK Terran Marine Medic Science Vessel styles in the world. Yeah, and that's really the classic way to uh, play the uh, the matchup. And, and when you're really mechanically good at that, and by the way, it's one of the most mechanically demanded, maybe even actually the most mechanically demanding way to play the game. Yeah, it is. Is the SK Terran style. You're making barracks out, uh, or sorry, Marines out of barracks like at an insane rate. You're, you're having to constantly rebind hotkeys. You're having to constantly... Uh, move huge ch groups of units units that if you don't control perfectly die mm -hmm. um but light has mastered that and this is also a a style of play that will tear your tendons up a lot yes. of terran <laughs> players have had wrist issues or, or forearm issues because of this yeah it, specifically uh terran versus zerg in starcraft 1 and starcraft 2 is like what will really get you because it it does you like you said it's the most mechanically demanding thing in starcraft uh, is just TVZ. It's it, like it, it 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 takes a lot of APM. I mean, I was playing TVZs today, and even I got my wrist starting to hurt, and I, that almost never happens. It's just like you have to move so quickly to macro everything, get your Marines moving around. Now look at this—a little right. funny engagement in the center. Three Marines versus four links. <laughs> yeah, uh, we don't normally have that, but no. <laughs> uh, the Marines barely survived that, and they're going to pull away. We've got the depot up here uh, near the entrance for light. This is to make it harder to just get Ling all in, which mm -hmm. is a thing that can happen in this matchup early on. Yeah, it's actually, a, that's a beautifully placed depot. I actually probably am going to steal that as of tomorrow. Uh, that's, it looks good. Yeah, it's like the comm stat will actually mostly wall this off, and like that's that's pretty tight. So that's, that's a nice little location that he chose there, but... Uh, it doesn't look like Action is planning on making lots of lings or anything. He has a Spire on the way. He's trying to block this SCV from getting that scout off. And it looks like he will. Yeah, it gets the SCV kill. The Marines are going to roam a little bit. Just checking if there's any lings down here to counterattack. We're going into that two-hatch muta style. The second gas being acquired. This is, again, a different game from what Artosis was calling Crazy Zerg. That we saw action do uh, earlier on against mm -hmm. Scan. This this entire approach to the matchup is a different style uh, and requires the Terran to behave very differently. 
Yeah, it, like, uh, there's still a slight chance that Action could do it, but I don't think he's going to. We haven't seen an Evolution Chamber yet, and you'll generally get that around now. Uh, mm -hmm. But, I, I mean, this is a big four-player map, and in these spawns specifically, it's not that hard for Zerg to take bottom right and then just, you know, slowly push down and take a fourth base at that bottom right natural. So, I think that's probably the approach that Action will take, but we'll see. Action going to run in here with these links. These SCVs do not make a tight wall in. Uh, so the Marine over at the entrance goes down, and he could basically scout and see what exactly Terran's up to. And this is a very specific time that he's running around with these links, because Light needs to start the turrets literally right now. So any time he buys makes it more likely, uh, while Light Micro's here, that he won't have his turrets ready. Yeah, look at this. He's at, He is a little bit late. The Mutas are popping, and he hasn't started turrets. Just now in the main base, we see a turret starting. At the ramp, we see a turret starting. Nothing at the natural. It's a little bit scary as these Mutas come forward. This is kind of crazy. I, you know, I, we can't emphasize enough how important it is that these turrets finish in time, or the Mutalist damage can start to snowball here. Yeah, he's and trying. it looks like the first uh, turret's going to finish. That's really funny. Like, as Zerg, you're kind of guessing where the last place they told turrets to build is. And he guessed yeah. the main. And actually, that was the first place he had turrets built. So that was the first turret that finished. He just didn't get the SCV. So Light, in the nick of time, saves himself with those turrets. So the Mutas are going to try to come in here once more. Now, there's just enough turrets. I don't know how much of a threat the Zerg can be. And we got to point out big picture here. If you're both sharing the top spawns on this map, you're actually very close together. Mm -hmm. So counterattacks and all that are a real threat. If Zerg's not careful, Terran can punch through and hit these bases. Third base, by the way, being taken here, just adjacent to the starting location here of Action. Hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a very close by one. And Light is in the middle of the map right now. Action is going to kill all those Marines and Medics. It's. I'm surprised that he's this far out with them. Because I don't think he's going to, like, notice where Action's flying. He's flying in between reinforcements and the bio ball. Because he knows he can kill this. He's just waiting for the right moment. Oh, a nice pickoff there by Light, though. Does get a single Muta. And the Muta is, you know, I, I got to say, actually, Light's control is really good back there. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, to deal with that. He did basically keep him at bay. And, um... Do we have that Lurker tech? We don't, right? Uh, no. No Lurker tech coming here. Nothing as of yet. Yeah. To... Can the Zerg just keep going mutas, and is that safe? Is he just going to get armor and just try to <laughs> muta ball it? Uh, most people get attack nowadays to do that, but yeah, he... Oh, I mean, okay. you can just go pure muta. In fact, look how many mutas he has right now. He's up to 15 mutas on the map, and more popping out every second. So, he's going to annihilate this group in the center. I think that's really important. In fact, he might not still know it's there because he can kill it so easily with 15 mutas. Okay, sees it, but well, everything is joining up. up now. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, if you stay on only mutas, then you like it. You got to be careful because if light gets into Valkyries or radiates, it's going to be really hard to make that payoff. Yeah, we don't have that starport tech done yet. Science vessel is on the way. And the Queen's Nest and the uh, Hydra Den here. It looks like he'll probably get some Lurkers and then go into Defilers. I don't think there's any chance of Guardians. I don't think that would be a thing. D doesn't seem like there's any good spot on the map. But every once in a while, you'll see a Zerg cheese with Guardians. Mm, yeah. Not it, action, really, though. It doesn't feel like a Guardian build, you're right. It's just like, this isn't quite how you would pull that off, most likely. Uh, he's just flying around with those news. I'm really surprised that he didn't eliminate... The middle bio ball. I think that that was a lost opportunity from action. And now there's so yeah. much bio on the map. It's okay. Finally, he's going to be able to pick off some of these units. All right, gets on top of this, but does lose a couple mutas killing that off. So not as efficient there's... as he would like. The natural, it could just go down, man. Mm. Look at this. I mean, can you beat this with mutas? I maybe, but like this is a lot of drones mm. that are going to be killed. Yeah. No, he's, he's in action, trouble. <laughs> he just lost. <laughs> All right. All right. Another victory for Light. <laughs> Light is the king again. Well, that's uh, 
That was the. the that's that not how I expect that to go. That was my game that we no, got to that cast. Wasn't, how about you, Artosis? It wasn't the best, to be honest. Yeah, Woo! it was a little. I was a little bit disappointed there. Uh, it, yeah, action kind of played it a little bit funny, I think. Like, when he has that small group out and you have 10 mutas in the middle, there is not much of an excuse to not kill that group and make it harder and harder and harder for Light to get into the center of the map. Yeah. Uh, Light's micro was very good, and it seemed like action was trigger shy, I guess. Is that what you call it? Like, you're afraid to go do something? Uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of see what you're saying. I, I don't know what... What happened there? You, you pointed out a couple times, but I think it's actually worth reiterating. Like, he, he there were Marines he could kill in the middle, and he didn't. And you know, part of those Marines being out there is to ensure that the main is safe. And Zerg didn't attack the main either. And so then there were just too many Marines in the middle of the map, and he pushed across and he won the game. So, mm -hmm. like, there you go. Yeah. Right, here we go. In the top left, we have the up and coming Zerg Pro Yabsab. Yab stab. Yeah, great ID. Uh, and in the top right, we have none other than the greatest Terran in the world, Light, who is on a an eight map winning streak. That's which right. Is just crazy. Yeah, this is um, again, it's a matchup. It's just it. Let's say it. It's hard to imagine Light really losing. Um, <laughs> uh, a TVZ. He's very clean at it. He actually made that last TVZ look like it was the most simple one-dimensional matchup. It is not, but, you know, it looked like, like Marine Man versus Muta Gamer. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. He just... Yeah. The Marines with the guns ultimately won, but Shakras is a little bit tricky as well. You know, uh, it, it can be easily overlooked because on the surface it looks like any other four-player map, like Fighting Spirit or, or, or Polypoid or anything but actually because there's pathways that that hug the right the right side the left side the top side the bottom side rush distances are insane hmm. any rush on that map is extremely strong and so even though we have a, a zvt here that's basically in a, it is a similar looking position as far as starting locations on the map um this is not a similar situation at all. I mean, the Zerg has a much larger travel distance as the as as does the Terran to get to his opponent. Hmm. Oh, that's a good point. The uh, by the way, you you know you said at the beginning here that you thought well, it's hard to imagine Light losing to Yabsab. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's a best one. Anything can happen. Yabsab's a great player. I'm sure that he occasionally beats Light when they play, but. Really, you got to think about it in these terms. Light is the best Terran. So who actually is favored against Light? Maybe nobody, but people who can can actually beat him, you got to really think of the very, very top of the races. Like maybe Queen, maybe Larva, maybe Mini, maybe Best, maybe Snow. You know, those are kind of the players where you're like, okay, these are the people that you can be like, okay, they're they're even money against Light. And everyone else, well, they're they're in a hard spot. Yeah, he's just one of those players that's, like, always a safe bet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When you're watching, it's like, well, he's just, he, he really has a very good handle on the matchup. And, and you know, there's nothing extraordinary usually about what Light's doing in this matchup in the sense, like, he's not, you know, like, you look at Mini in a PBZ and you go, wow, this guy uh, is just cutting corners in a way that we've never seen before. That's mm -hmm. not exactly how Light plays. Light's kind of doing everything in a very textbook, safe fashion and kind of covering all his bases yeah, and yeah. making it work. Yeah, yeah. He's kind of like, if you're a StarCraft II fan, maybe like an innovation type. He's very macro-centric. Yeah. He's... And the, the thing is, that means more in StarCraft One. Like, uh mechanics, like, put you further ahead of people in StarCraft One than in StarCraft Two because it's like... Everyone has vastly different mechanical levels, and Light is up at the tippity top, especially in this matchup, as far as macro goes. Like, he, he can move his Bioforce around while m macroing out of eight Raxes and two ports perfectly. SCV on the run here. Getting chased out. Terran set up for a very clean macro opening. Uh, that factory coming down now. And oh. I think what... What Yab is going to do is basically what we saw Action do. 
Dude, what Except is... Except he might make a den. Oh, no. He's going to make a spire. What is this build from Light? <laughs> I actually... I wasn't really paying attention because I just assumed it was going to be something normal, but that's like a very fast yeah, factory. Uh... I, It's... It's not exactly a 1-1-1, one, 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 but it kind of looks like it. Yeah, this is interesting, especially now that the Academy is coming here. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like, I can't quite figure it out, but the two things that come to mind is, like, maybe this is a very quick Vessel or Valkyrie, like some anti-Muta. Or it could be, like, the one factory Goliath into bio. Okay, he throws the starport down, I, so... No, I think it's a fast Valkyrie. Yeah, I think so. I think so. We'll see. He, he has to start the armory in the next 20 seconds or so, and then we'll see if it... Yeah, the armory's at the natural. It, there it is. Yeah. So, that is. This is a Valkyrie rush coming out of light, and that kind of shows that he's showing a lot of respect for Yabsab's control. Uh, I can definitely yeah. vouch that Yabsab has some insane mutilist control. A lot of the newer... Uh, Zerg players, really, that's kind of where their strength is, right? Like, the the older Zerg pros, of course, all have very strong mutas, but you look at players like Soma, Yabsab, some other ones, like, they are just superb with the Mutalisk. This is interesting. Like, if you can just outright mute the Mutalisk play with Valkyries and play it safe, I do feel like there's a lot of great counterplay you can have in there. Obviously, the Marines are going to come out later. Uh, by the way, this is all timed out so finely here from the Terran perspective. These turrets are going to finish as the Mutalisks would mm -hmm. get to the base. Yeah. No, he has that This took Terrans a long time out. to figure out, by the way, chat. Which one? To, the... to, to, to get the turrets exactly out in time, mm -hmm. like... And not because people would make them too soon, but then you lost all this money. Uh, so, and then if you make them is, too late, you're like actually just you're dead. dead. <laughs> yeah. All right, the first few meters so come see. over, and he's kind of hiding the starport. You see how he's hiding it, like floating a factory over it? That's a cool little yeah. move. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody might not notice this if they were just moving through the base fast enough. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he's got that, and he's probably going to be putting Valkyries behind the minerals. Look at this. He does have a couple turrets at the natural. Looks like the Muta's is getting ready to go into this natural. Get some harassment done. He has eight Mutas now in this stack. And here comes okay, the Valk. first Valk. Wow. Um, damages the Mutas. Now, I this is I truly something I just don't know because, you know, I played Terran some amount in my life like you've played Protoss some amount but like I don't know is there a number of Valkyries you actually want whoa he snipes that Valkyrie oh damn Valkyrie uh I'm no there's Valkyries like they're Vulcans <laughs> yeah uh really it's like you want Valkyries until they're kind of tech switching like I don't think you ever need more than four like four just massacres I guess if you're playing against like a guardian player maybe there could be situations where you get more than that but a lot of times, two is enough to just, like, when they start seeing Valks, unless they pick them off, they are going to kill everything. So you just kind of have to switch out, and then you want to go Vessel. There's no weird style you could do where you could just go, like, mass muta scourge, right? And just try to kill them that way. Has that ever happened? Yeah, I mean, if you can really keep the Valkyrie count down low, like, look, he's throwing some Scourge in there Damn. trying to get him, but Light's Micro just a bit too strong. These Mutas taking a ton of damage, and suddenly you look at this position, and Light is dominating. Yeah, this is uh, a real threat now, uh, his presence on the map. The Lurkers are coming out. Keep in mind the... Uh, Valkyrie tech is also, you know, it can be a problem in that you don't have any detection, but I don't see any lurkers burrowed here. So I, I actually feel like the Zerg yeah. may just outright <laughs> die here. I think you might be right. Okay, here comes a spread of Mutas with Scourge. He's trying to take them out like you suggested. But Tasteless, Whoa, it's not enough. I don't, okay, this is a glitch in the Matrix. This is the second light <laughs> game. And it will end in almost the same way. GG. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Light is pretty good at Ooh. that matchup, man. Those games. Yeah. All yeah. right. A little bit one-sided. Little bit. 
Well, a little he, bit. The Valkyrie build, like, he just, he had no idea that he was going Valks. He had already, like, committed pretty heavily to Mutas. So he decided, you know what? Let's make more Mutas. Like, let's make Scourge. Let's roll the dice. See if I can pick them off. Because if you pick the Valkyries off on, like, their first volleys, you can actually just kill them. Valkyries cost a lot of money to make. So you actually don't have as much Marine Medic when you're going for Valks. Uh, but, I mean, Light kept them alive <laughs> enough, man. And that was it. That was it. I can't even believe how 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 much the Valkyries dominated. I, I have a quick question about that little end part, the fight. It seems like when the Scourge are coming at you, you don't want to try to flip the Valkyries and, and have them hit the Scourge. No. It seems like you want to have them flip and hit the Mutas. Is this correct? Yeah, yeah. You can't like it's, really... It's all about... Valks don't kill Scourge before they get there. Like, the way Valkyries shoot is really silly. Like, it, mm. it's just they won't they won't really kill a Scourge. So you're hoping that the Marines pick off the Scourge? Like, maybe I he's see. targeting Scourge? I don't know, but like... You're trying to pile damage on the Mutas at the same time, because that's really the the game-winning play, is to have the damage accumulate, even if it's for, like, a second and a half more. Because mm -hmm. the damage distribution for Valkyries as well is, is kind of a funny thing. It just seems that if they fire all these missiles out, I'm not even quite sure exactly how it works, but... Yeah. It does see like does seem like you can kind of just I don't, how do I say this compile the damage pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. Like if the Valkyries like he had what two three Valkyries there in that final battle, if the Valkyries shoot three times, you win. Damn, like three really? Valkyries shooting three times, you've done so much damage to the Mutas, and the the splash spread is pretty big. So you're just you're massacring at that point. Like they need to they need to snap the Valkyrie necks almost immediately and then it's not that big a deal.